So this uh, uh, part about the bee management or bee forming life cycle, as I have uh, mentioned here in the top right here, actually the, this just summarizes the overall procedures being followed by even the network or the UE until they acquire or uh, receive the allocation of the the traffic channels. Actually, the primary objective of beam management in general is to identify and maintain the optimal beams for transmission in both the uplink and downlink directions. Especially, like you can say, beam management is mainly applied to both the physical downlink shared channel and physical uplink shared channel. This is the end goal of the beam management that you will follow multiple steps until you got the optimal uh, traffic channel beams for even an uplink or downlink direction. So as you can see here in, in this figure, I just highlighted that initially, whenever the users or the UE or devices in the idle mode, you will be starting in the idle mode. So the first thing will happen from the network and the UE side, that as you know, the first thing is done usually in the, in the 5G, the user will be starting scanning the, uh, 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 scanning the network, for example, scanning the synchronization signal and uh, primary synchronization signal and secondary synchronization signal until he acquired so-called assessment, right? But this is how it's happening. So if, if you look into this figure on the left side here, this is something called initial beam acquisition, which is usually called procedure P1, okay? During the P1 uh, and during the initial access and dying mode, the network will be like transmitting the different SSP beams within the cells up to uh, yeah, eight in the, uh, in the um, mid band, which is up into eight, eight SSP beams, uh, which is being covering the complete cell, as you can see, as an example here. So the first thing will be done for, from the UE, he will start scanning all these SSPs in that time domain and trying to measure all of them until he finds the best and optimum beams based on, for example, in the coverage, RSRP. So once he obtained the best beams, the network still doesn't know which beam is the best for the user because this is something done by the user itself. He find that, for example, here in this particular example, the beam number three or SSB beam index number three is the best beam for the user. So how the network will know and how we'll have this same, the so-called something called beam bears. Beam bears means, which is highlighted on the top right here, which is the second step actually. Beam bears meaning what, how the network or the GNB side will know what is the best beam in the downlink direction towards the UE. So uh, in the very uh, beginning of the idle mode, once the user acquire the uh, SSP or synchronization signal block, he will be reading the system information block type one. So he will get some information about the RACH. And each SSP block is associated with, with a specific preamble, uh, preamble ID. I will be explaining this part in detail with a visualization example in upcoming slides as well. So, uh, as I mentioned, the, because the user already uh, read or de decoded the SSP, he will know the system information block type one. He will acquire some information about the random access procedures. So the next step that user will initiate uplink random access uh, preamble. And based on the preamble, because the GMB know that this preamble is associated with a specific beam. So the GMB will know that the user was already latching or camming on the SSP block uh, ID three. So this, in this case, the the already the, the network and the user side established the best downlink beam and even uplink beam. Downlink beam bears means that the, for example, the best beam here is downlink, this number three, and for example, received by by the in the downlink direction by by uh, SSP beam and X two from the receiver side from the user side. And also in the uplink direction, uh, the initial B ratch will be sending an uplink. So this is, would be the uplink being for the user. And in this case, we had established both um, uh, beam bears for both uplink direction. And example for the beam bears, as you can see here in the bottom left figure here, that for example, if this is the transmitted beams from the GMB side. And the user like has identified that this is the best received beam here. And all this information is communicated uh, during the SSP acquisition and also during sending the BRATCH uh, and doubling from the user side. This is the main idea about the initial beam acquisition, which is covering the part related to the so called beam swapping. And beam swapping, whenever you hear this uh, terminology or this kind of word, the beam swapping, this is mainly happening in the idle mode and it's more related to the SSP, which is being transmitted by the cell and different beams uh, covering the complete cell. But one important point, point to highlight that uh, in general, this is like not a mandatory deployment for all the network or vendors. 
For example, some vendors might have the initial beam as only one beam. For example, the SSP can be only one wide beam, or even you can change the configuration. This is like based on the practical scenario. Uh, in any vendor, they can use only one, one wide beam. So in this case, it's already one wide beam, so there is no beam swapping. So it will be just a straightforward. Whatever beam is there, there is only be coming this beam, and this is also reducing later on the kind of the beam switching between different SSPs. But as as bare the standard, this is, should be the scenario during the procedure P, P1, P1, initial beam acquisition, P1. This one will I'll be showing the uh, beam swapping, and you will ma will achieve this kind of beam bearings through the user sending random access response and doubling. So once the second point being done, which is the beam bearing, and the user already transited to the connected mode after sending the uplink um, uh, or pratch in the uplink direction. So now the the GMB will start doing something called beam refinement. Beam refinement means that, as you know, in the connected mode. The, the user will start be measuring the so-called CSIRS, which is a, a channel st state information reference signal. And he will be start measuring that part in order to report some, to give some feedback about the downlink propagation of channel to the GMB to give him uh, this the, based on the measurement of the CSIRS. So actually during the CSIRS, the G GMB, as per the standard as well, can do additional refinement for the initial beams. So for example, if you look into the same figure and left here, there is P2. P2, which is a beam refinement, P2. This one actually, as you can see here, the each of the SSP beams will be refined into four, uh, four small beams, as you can see. Those beams is more related to CSRS. So now, for example, if you have eight beams in the in the cell, as shown in the in the bottom left figure here, you will have around 32 um, eight multiplied by four. You will have around 32 beams, CSRS beams within the complete cell. The complete cell. So it will looks like this at the very end for the complete site, which is three sectors. We'll have very small beams for the CSRS. This is called beam refinement, and this is required that you, you, from the connected mode, so you will have more narrower beams. So whenever the user is going to read the CSIRS, you will have more accuracy and also less interference, so he can give an accurate feedback about his downlink propagation channel in order to later on the GMB will use whatever information acquired by the user to start uh, doing the allocation or the dynamic uh, allocation of the uh, shared channel or traffic channel beams in general. So this is P2 related to the CSS, CSI uh, or beam refinement in general. And again, this is based on the standard, but this is not really impl implemented practically in, in, in the current scenario in majority of the networks. You will hear that, okay, each, each SSP beam should have four CSRS, but it, this is not the, the uh, actual, actual scenario now, as at least as per my knowledge. This is as per the 3G PP standard. Yes, this is should be the scenario, but at least for the mid band, it's not yet implemented. You'll find that, yes, you have um, uh, you have a, a pre coded CSRS uh, beams or uh, a beam forming for the CSRS, but it's not really following the exact scenario. I'll be covering this part in the next slides as well. The third procedure here, which is I didn't highlight in this one, because this is, would be more about related to the E capability itself. Maybe it's in, in, in millwave, but it's not yet now in the mid-band part. That the U, U, UE himself, the P, P3, the UE himself will do this kind of beam swapping in order to change the received beam. So based, like for example, if he foresee that this beam two, uh, the best received beam is should be one or three or four. He's doing a beam swapping from his side in order to uh, achieve the best receive beam, uh, for example, in downlink direction. So this is like a procedure is, is, is not yet uh, available in the main band, as I mentioned. So this is, can be there in the future, later on, even in the middle wave or whenever we have uh, devices supporting the, this kind of beam swapping, as you can see in this figure. So once the beam refinement is being done, which is the CSRS uh, uh, being uh, being formed, the user now will start measuring the um, the CSRS, and uh, he will be start reporting some information to the network in order to the network to it will allow the network to allocate the best beam or the best the traffic beam, which is can be DSSH or physical downing shared channel, or if you're speaking about doubling direction, it will be physical uplink shared channel. So this is actually can be done through different methods. If you are speaking of even about both of them, even based on CSRS, which is a cell, cell specific uh, channel state information uh, reference signal, 
measurement will be covering this part in details, which is kind of late, uh, called uh, code box and downlink direction or sounding referencing. So this feedback will be reported to the, the to the GNB. So GNB will decide based on this report what is the best uh, beam to be allocated as direction of the users, and it will give an RRB. Also, will be showing this in details. So. Uh, once the feedback is being sent and so on. So the next procedures, it's about the beam mobility management. For example, as we highlighted in the previous scenarios, you might have this kind of, for example, during the SSP scenario, you have eight beams. So you might switch from one beam to another. So you need to do this kind of beam switching, right? You need to change the beam. It's called beam switching, especially in, in whenever you are speaking about changing within the intracell. So there is two uh, types of beam mobility management, something called intracell mobility, which is actually done during the during only by the L1 L2 procedures, which is mean done uh, as a communication between the physical and MAC layer only. There is no involvement for of the RRC layer, which means there is no interruption here. This uh, procedure is being done uh, whenever the user is just deciding to shift from one cell to another. He will be reporting to the network something called CRI or SSP uh, RI. CRI uh, is referred to. CSIR is uh, resource indicator, and this is one SSP uh, resource indicator. In other words, like for example, each SSP, for example, if you have eight SSP, each SSP will be associated with a specific uh, index. So if the user, for example, changes uh, his location from SSP eight and he moved to SSP six, you will be reporting to the network, I'm coming now in SSP six, and this is my L1 RSRP. There is L1 RSRP and there is L3 RSRP. This is uh, uh, like reporting the coverage about 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 his current situation. So this is actually uh, the call saw that the, as mentioned here, the base station and UE will adapt the beams to changing condition, and this is intracell mobility involves beam switching. And for the other way, way around, if you move from uh, one cell to another or from one side to another, this is just involving the normal uh, procedures of the handovers, as we have seen before, and even in the 4G or any other, uh, or even in 5G, which is related to the uh, A3 or A2 or A5 reporting, depending on its intra, uh, intra frequency or inter frequency handover. This is will be the kind of a normal one. I'll be covering both scenarios with details with the parameters as well. Then moving to the next part, it's about the beam failure detection and recovery. Okay. Uh, first of all, this is will be happened whenever you have, for example, assume you have this kind of beam switching from one CSRS beam to another, and this beam switching was being failed, right? So this can trigger that there is a beam failure detection. This is will be detected by the user. There is a beam failure. Also, I have details explanation about that part. So in this case, if the user detected there is a beam failure detection, uh, for example, this can be done at the physical layer and MAC layer as well, without involving the high layer, and it's very transparent to the RRC layer. So if, they, if it's being detected at the MAC layer that there is a beam failure detection, the user will initiate the beam recovery through initiating the PRATCH procedures toward the target or the new target beam. So this can be acquired at the very end. And uh, in general, uh, the radio link failures in general in 5G can be divided into two parts, which is a uh, beam uh, at the MAC layer or RC layer. Currently, MAC layer, which is related to the beam failure detection and recovery and so on, this is not yet very applicable currently in the in the current deployment in the mid band, as you saw. You may you may find it, but I, I don't bring you from my practical experience. It's mainly about the normal uh, radio link failure, which is related to the T310, as I will be explained later on. Uh, I will explain the reason why later on when you go into details for that part. But this is just a slide summarizing the overall procedures for the beam management, starting from the idle mode until you got the traffic channels. And even if you have kind of changing your SSP or CSRS, we'll have this kind of beam mobility. And also if the beam is being failed or in general, if there is a radio link failure being triggered. So this is just explaining the complete uh, pr procedures for the beam forming within the 5G.